I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever As you can see here, my field peas are getting too close to the light. So instead of just dropping some of the boxes down, I'm going to put them. Let me show you the second row. And I'm just going to put them down here where I have these. And you can see that the fan is on them, making them tough. Watch this oscillating. There it goes. And I'm going to uh, put my lar paper. I'm going to come back and show you the paper. I purchased this big roll of mylar paper. And you can see how much is still on the boat right there. It's a lot. I purchased it about six years ago. I want to say for about $30, between $30 and $40. And it has been just lasting forever. So this paper will... This is the shiny side, will reflect a lot of light. You can even see me, it's like a mirror. And so I'm gonna line the bottom of this shelf where I'm out housing my tall plants for about another month. And I'll come back and let you see after I cut the paper and put it down. Okay, let me show you what I've done to this top row. I only put a few seedlings up here to keep the paper in place because the oscillating fan is moving on them. But this top row will be just the little solo cups there. And let me show you what I did with all of the peas transplants, except for a few right here. I put them down here. Okay? So you see, I just spread the mylar paper, applied it right on top of this wire wrap and I'll trim it off later and so I let these down a little bit lower and you can see I have one shop light and the rest are grow lights they are doing wonderful some of them have on their fourth set of leaves okay these are field peas some people call them cow peas. And it's too warm outside. I put one outside. Let me see if I can find it. I think I put it in the bucket for the compost. Anyway, it shriveled up. It's just too hot. It shriveled up kind of like this. See these leaves right here? But the whole plant did that. Okay? So these are going to stay inside until I am certain that the temperatures will remain around the 80s, okay? And even cooler at night for these to flourish. Okay, so here are the seed wings and the peat pellets that I still have to pot up and they will go all across this top shelf. And I'll even bring another rack out if I have to and I still have these right here. These are um, golden beets. And I'm going to direct sow some of these seeds as well um, outside when it gets cooler. So it'll be succession planting. Okay. And if you're not familiar with that, let me give you a little tip. It is when you plant, you stagger your planting so that you won't have to harvest everything at one time. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to make this look a little bit better. This is in my foyer. Um, and uh, so I want to make it look a little presentable. And I'll come back after I pot all of these seedlings up. I dropped a couple cups. That's why you see a little soil here and there. 
but when I'm all done, it's going to look really, really nice. At least I will think it looks nice, and that's all that matters. <laughs> My mom used to say, do you like it? And I would say, yes. She said, that's all that matters, honey. Don't worry about what people think about you. You just do the best you can. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can, and I'm sharing what this old lady has learned with other people, and let them know that they don't necessarily have to have acres and acres of land in order to be self-sufficient and grow your own food. I don't have a huge backyard. It's just a little bit larger than a standard box for my area. And I work with what I have. And I grow food all year long. And I have plenty to last me. And my children, I give away some to them. And I also give away to my senior citizen friends. And I'm content and I'm happy. And that's all that really matters. Do what you love, people, and don't worry about what other people think. My children used to come and visit me, and they would say things like, Mama, what are you doing? Why are you messing up the lawn in the backyard? Why are you putting all these planters in here? Why are you growing so many trees? But honey, now when they come to visit me, they love it. They take pictures of it. They put it on Instagram. They are proud of their mother. So if you decide that you want a food forest in your backyard and your family may not understand why you had the sun deck torn down or why you're putting a lot of garden beds in or greenhouse, don't worry about what people say. Do you. Because I'm telling you, we will never have to panic about food shortages when we grow our food and preserve it. And we know what's in the jars when we can it. And I'm not talking about putting everything in the freezer because the power can go out. I learned that lesson when I was young. And the power would go out in Indiana, where I'm from, all the time through bad storms. So I knew that Freezing is okay for short-term storage, okay? But the long-term storage, I recommend that you can it. That way, if you lose power, your food won't spoil. So I freeze things. I've got a freezer full of tomatoes and green beans that I'll be canning. As soon as it gets a little cooler, I'm going to be canning a lot. It may not be as much as you see people doing in other channels, but it'll be enough for me and my friends. Okay, so I finished the top shelf, and I have a lot of seedlings that I potted up. You can't hardly tell, but on this row... I have at least four cups. I'm trying to get back there. It's up kind of high, guys. So you can see all of that. It's a lot. I have right now 160 little cups. Let's go to the second row. And as you can see, I put that mylar all across there. And it will reflect the light even where... There isn't any lights right in this area here. The light from up here will reflect off of the mylar. And you can do this with um, aluminum foil as well. Okay, so let me show you all of the seedlings back on this row. And you can see they're moving slightly because of that oscillating fan. I put a little post on... Um, yesterday and people are commenting about the stems look so uh strong especially in let me go down here and show you the peas especially with the peas and that's because you can see that they're moving the fan is mimicking wind and that will toughen them up so you can um harden them off outside but i usually do that with a shade cloth so i don't have to really harden them off now some of these are down here let me move back a little bit some of these are looking a little limp 
because I just potted them up. So they are going to spring forth and be strong and upright like the ones you see that's been growing for several weeks. And this is half of what I'm gonna grow. I'm on my getting ready to start my second round of seeds. And um, I will also, like I said earlier, I also will be uh, direct sowing some outside. But here I'm gonna put in uh, these peak pellets, I'm gonna put carrots, parsnip. Uh, I think I got two types of parsnips I'm gonna grow. I uh, got some Savoy cabbage seeds in, and I have some more seeds coming in from Baker Creek. I don't know if you can see back there. Let me show you guys. I put them in these little shoe boxes until they finish draining. And then I'll take them out of here and put them on the shelf like so. And that's how I water them. I do not water from the top. I water from the bottom. And that way, I don't have a lot of ants and fungus in my, on my seedlings or in my house. So let me show you some of the seedlings that I have. I have golden beets, Chinese broccoli, Early Girl or Early Jersey Wakefield Cabbage. I've got Detroit Beets. I have uh, Thousand Head Kale. Let's see, I think this is Red Russian Kale right here. These are all of the seedlings I grow every year. You will learn what works and grows well for you. I have uh, MS Mustard Spinach. Uh, dwarf curly kale. I have like four different types of kale. I have a blue type of kale, curly kale and a dwarf. This is a uh, turnips. And of course I have the regular uh, uh, greens like the collards as I said earlier. Collards, turnips. I have about three different types of spinach. I know I have red. No, I have three types of uh, mustard. The Japanese red mustard, the curly mustard, and the mustard spinach. Lots and lots of seedlings, and I still have more to go. Okay, guys, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, grow your own and eat your own. You can do it. Don't work hard. Just learn how to work smart. Okay? All right. Thank you for watching. Grow oh, your own, eat your own, it's not all you can do with, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you for watching, see you real soon, bye now.